get started. Uh, welcome to Turnkey Trading. We're going to look at uh, some stocks tonight. This is Sunday night, October 22nd. And um, we're going to see what tomorrow brings. What tomorrow might bring, I should say. Let's go ahead and let's get started. So first stock I want to look at is Rivian. Um, I like Rivian for the short side. As you can see, it's underneath these moving averages. It's clearly moving down. Very weak. We have congruency here uh, on the orange, congruency here. We have the red TSI here. The RSI and TCI are, are weak, although um, not strongly committed right now. We'll see what it looks like before the bell tomorrow. And uh, uh, this MACD, this RSI, and stochastics, and dynamic money flow. We've got weakness all around. Now, what don't we have here? Well, we do have the sell signal here, okay? It's still intact. We don't have the Feb ratio right now. But I think we have enough right now uh, where you could enter a short after the bell, okay? Based on everything that we see here, I'm just showing, I see no reason to think that this thing is going to suddenly make a scream and move the other direction on us. Okay, so you might be okay with Rivian. All right, next talk is Lenner, L-E-N, I believe they're a home builder. Similar situation with a lot of stocks, um, lots of weakness. We've had uh, two weeks of, of, well, week and a half or so of weakness. <coughs> we do have the this marker here, this indicator, we still don't have the Feb ratio, which is okay, as long as we have everything else. And we do. We've got congruency here in the orange. We have the uh, DSA positive and negative signs uh, diverging. S and we've got very strong uh, downward slope and direction here, you know, in congruency with this. We have the TSI indicator that just recently uh, became more co committed to the downside. And of course, these lines are pointing down. I'd like to see these together, like t woven tightly, like this one, but they're not. That's okay. You don't have to be. <coughs> and then uh, this uh, improved MACD and, and here and here. Yeah, we've got downward direction everywhere. So you might be okay for a short position on Lynn. Now we'll take a look at a financial. Um, ETF, it's the KRE, which is the regional banks. This is primarily the reason why the IWM has been so such a dumpster fire as the regional banks. But let's take a look at the KRE. We've got this marker here, the chandelier exit, big downward move on Friday. We've got uh, congruency here, nice slope, downward direction here. Still waiting for the TSI to turn. Okay, we don't have that yet. I'm surprised. Maybe we'll maybe this will show up after the bell, but we don't have it right now. <coughs> and these are pointing down, and uh, we have downward direction and slope on the rest of them. So right now, because we don't have this committed, we don't have the Feb ratio marker up here. I don't think I would get into KRE, but I did want to take a look at it. I mean, it looks great. I mean, look at the two hour here. I mean. You know, it's probably not going to go screaming the other direction on you if you were to get into it. So, if you're someone who's looking for a good and excuse me, a good setup, not necessarily great, but a good one, you, know, you might be able to do this one. Maybe a half size position. Now, let's look at Lilly. This is a pharmaceutical. Um, definitely some downward direction here. Uh, you've got uh, maybe 2 or 3% more to go to reach this moving average where it could bounce. Um, we do have both of these markers up here. Congruency here, here. This one is certainly rolling over. We don't have the commitment from it yet. These are pointing down, and we've got down, down, down here too. So you'll probably be okay if you get into a short on Lily. Um, we will probably get this after the bell, I'm guessing, but I don't know. But understand, if you get into this, understand that you've you've got some support coming up at around 573-ish. You're at 588, 584 now, so you've only got about 2% to go. It might not be worth getting into right now. So, I mean, I wouldn't advise it, but, you know, 
for a scalp, you might be okay. Now let's look at GPC, Genuine Parts. They Something happened to them on Thursday and Friday. They took a nice tumble. So they're clearly weak, moving down. And of course, you know, when the candles look like that, you're going to have agreement and congruency all the way down, which we do. So um, the next support level, got to zoom way out for this one. Uh, we might be in that area right now, actually, if you if we come over here and look at this. Yeah, we're kind of in some area of support right now for GPC. So for that reason, uh, even though these all look great, I will probably would not get into this because it looks like it might, if it doesn't, you know, retrace, it could go sideways on you. So that's a problem when you come up to support. You don't know if it's going to do a V or if it's going to do a, a dead cat bounce. Okay, I probably would not get into this one. All right, let's take a look at LRCX. Nice downward direction. You do have a little bit of room to go before the next support, which is this moving average. Uh, we've got all the markers on the cell that we need. Congruency here, 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 all the way down. Okay, so we got nice agreement everywhere for a short position on LRCX. It looks like the next support level is going to be around 578 area. We're at 600 right now. So you've got about 3 or 4% to move before you could run into trouble if it's going to come down to the support. Okay, but clearly lots of weakness on LRCX. Next one is OSTK, overstock. We've got this cell indicator here. We don't have the Feb ratio. We have congruency here. And it looks like this one just recently changed to orange. Congruency here. We don't have the commitment from the TSI yet. These are not real. I mean, they're, they're pointing down. They're in agreement. This is the RSI and the TSI. But it's not a firm downward commitment. We've got, we do here, here, and here, we've got pretty much agreement everywhere else. Um, but I think this, this could be a problem. This doesn't excite me either. We don't have the Feb ratio, which is this marker. We need it to be up here as well. Maybe it'll come after the bell. Maybe this whole setup will drop after the bell. I don't know. But as we see it right now, I think I would uh, shy away from it, look for something else. And we'll look at the GDX, which is the gold miners. This should be, this should scream right at you. See this top here, this top here, and we've hit it again right here. So automatically, I would not go long. I mean, I literally don't care what I see down here. Okay. It, we are hitting some resistance. Now, if it retraces off it, if it bounces off of that resistance, I don't know. I can't tell the future. But this is enough for me to say, watch out. In fact, watch this it might be setting up for a sh uh, you know a short it, it could come back down here and dance around and then move up again you, we might well we'll have to watch this one we might get a short move on this okay but i would not go long not right now all right let's take a look at ba boeing very weak it's been weak for a long time we've got the two cell markers that we need they are intact we have congruency here. Let's take a closer look at this. Yeah, divergence. That's even better. Okay. Orange here, orange here. <sighs> Still don't have strong commitment from this TSI. I think we have enough. Um, we have this, and the, this one looks like it's topped out. Don't have solid commitment from these stochastic, though. And this is still flat. Um, its downward slope is weak. So might be a little early for Boeing. So set this one on the shelf. I probably would not go short on this one. You know, you can see what it looks like after the bell. But right now, from what I see, not a strong um, downward commitment right now. All right, the FAZ, that is a 3x ETF for the financials. Because financials are weak, this one goes up. This is the inverse. 
And as you can see, it has very strong upward momentum. Well, you know, it, 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 it's, it's hitting something right here. Uh, is that enough to, to push it down again? I don't know. We do have this buy here. We don't have the, the Feb ratio marker here, though. We have congruency here and here. You know, we, you know, all the way down. We have nice, nice upward momentum and direction right now. Um, you could probably get into this one. Let's take a look at, um, you know, it may not see any resistance until it gets to 20, 250, 23. Okay. So, yeah, I think you can probably do a long position right now. It's not one to hold forever, but uh, maybe for a day or two. You know, it depends on how it goes. But clearly it uh, has very strong momentum to the upside. All right, let's look at Carvana, CVNA. Heavy downward move, very weak. We have congruency everywhere. We're still under this cell here, and we know that because we haven't seen any green buy markers here. So this is still intact. We've got this here. That's important. And orange, orange, yeah, just downward, downward commitment and direction all around. So Carvana could be uh, a good short for tomorrow. All right, now Ion Q. This is one of the better one, better setups. Uh, weak and potentially weak until it gets all the way down to about 10, and it's at 13 right now. Okay. Now the thing is, it is hitting some. You know, is it going to break through this level of support? Uh, that's what we need to find out. I wouldn't jump into this unless we see how it moves in the pre-market and after the bell, but. Clearly, this one could be trending down and down, uh, potentially as far as to, to 10, okay? We got congruency here and here and all the way down. Okay, so very strong uh, direction for uh, heading down for IonQ, okay? And the next level of support, if we can get past here, it could be as far down as 10, but watch for this, okay? Make sure it has moved cleanly beyond this before you jump into a short. But this is one of the better ones tonight, one of the better setups. But we'll see how it goes in the pre-market tomorrow and after the bell. But I do like this one for a short. Okay, I think that's all for now. Um, thanks for watching. This is Turnkey Trading. I try to do this um, just about every day. If I can grow my channel, I will do it every day. But we're going to take a look at between 6 and 10 stocks every day that I'm looking at for longs and shorts that we can take positions in for a swing trade. Uh, we can last anywhere from 1 to, you know, 5 days or more. But at least, you know, maybe for a week. Okay? All right. Thanks for watching, and that's all for now.